It's time for Tread on Sports. Highlights from recent Lobo games, plus coaches' comments and player reactions. If there's time, we'll touch on local high school events and even have some comments on professional sports and teams of interest to New Mexico sports fans. Tread on Sports is an original production of Dana TV in cooperation with ProView Sports Channel 26. And now, here's Tread, your host for Tread on Sports. Hi, and thanks for watching Tread on Sports. I'm Tread. Today we're coming in from the Outpost Skating Arena where the UNM club hockey team plays their game. But today's show isn't going to be about hockey. We're going to be talking about the men and women's basketball games against Colorado State and Boise State. The women played both their games here at home in the pit, while the men traveled for the road. We're going to start with the women's game, women's game against Colorado State. And in the first quarter, it was Colorado State's Gustafson that got the scoring started with a deep two. Sharice would answer a little bit deeper and get credit for three points on that. Later in the quarter, Keller is going to fight for the offensive rebound off of the Sharice miss, step around her defender, and lay it in. Here we see Michael Burleson step in front of the passing lane, pick it off, and take it all the way for two. This is going to beat her lady down the floor, post early, and get that basket over her right shoulder. CSU gets the last three of the quarter there in the corner, and they take an 18-14 lead into the break. And in that first quarter, UNM was able to win the hustle points as they were able to get nine points combined between second chance and fast break. They were also able to get eight points in the paint. However, Sharice took six of the first nine Lobo shots and ended the quarter two for nine. And starting the second quarter, we see Sharice make the right play in transition and get Michaela Burleson the open three as the Lobos maintain the lead. Sharice is then going to make a great defensive play, get her own deflection as Jada Bovero is going to lay in the two and get fouled and get the three-point opportunity. And even though Colorado State didn't score for the first seven and a half minutes in the second quarter, they were getting good looks and continued to get good looks all night. Sharice continued to put up some questionable shots, but the Lobos had the lead. We pick up the action in the third as Vanderkill clears some space from her defender, gets her own miss, and puts it up to get the second chance opportunity. None is going to hit that three, but it's going to be answered by Gustafsson in the corner. Jason would not be deterred, and this time she gets the high-low pass from Vanderkill, and she lays in that open two. However, we see a theme start to develop as Colorado State will knock down three threes in the final minute ten, as this one by Nystrom, and then Maya Hamm will bring her team to within three to end the third quarter. And in the third quarter, Colorado State would go 6 of 11 from 3. The 6 makes would come in bunches as they, as they made their first 3 and their last 3. While the D was doing an excellent job getting in the passing lane, the crowd was beginning to grow restless with the number of open looks the Rams were getting in that quarter. I was looking forward to see if Coach was going to be able to make a change to the defensive strategy to challenge a couple more shots. And while the Lobos did deploy a 2-3 zone at times, Nystrom was still able to find open teammates as we see there. This is the Stein Augustine 3, and then Hannah Turdy would knock down two of the six threes Colorado State would hit in the fourth quarter. In the second half, they would make 12 of their 19 threes. Sharice is going to add that late three, but it was too little too late. The final score was 78-63. The Rams really opened up the game in the fourth quarter as they shot 11 for 15 overall and 6 of 8 from the three-point line. In the second half, the Rams would get 36 points off of threes compared to the Lobos getting 21 points off threes in the entire game. The Rams improved on their impressive third quarter as they were able to knock down five threes in a row at one point in the fourth. The 23-point differential in the second half, and this is what Coach had to say after the game. Well, I mean, clearly two different halves there. Um, uh, you know, you got to give them credit. Um, I mean, they're good and they're good for a reason. Um, I thought we did some did some things, especially in the first half, and even even most of the third quarter. Um, you know, disrupt them, disrupting them a little bit offensively. But um, in the end, they go 12 for 19 from a three in the second half, and um, you know, it's that's too much to overcome. With all the open threes Colorado State was getting, particularly from the corner, we asked Coach if this was a surprise or if he expected this coming in. Yeah, yeah. They, I mean, we we knew what they were doing, and um, you know, they they made shots. You know, they made corner threes, and um, they made a lot of them. Coming into the game, Coach knew they were going to have to shut down Colorado State's best player, Nystrom. In the first half, they did, but in the second half, she got loose. 
We asked him what the difference was between the two halves. Well, here was the problem, is she was in foul trouble in the first half. Okay, so the difference in their offense in the second half was she was the one with the ball, making all the decisions. That's why she's the best player. She doesn't have to score to be the best player. The Lobos had three players score in the teens, and we asked Coach if he was happy with his balanced offensive production. Yeah, well, I mean, we struggled again. You know, I mean, offensively, last two games, I mean, we've been about as bad as you could be. Um, you know, I mean, and it's it's getting more difficult at, with each game that goes by with, you know, the, the tape that's out there. Um, they used to only not guard one player that we had out there and put them in the paint. Now they're not guarding two. Um, so everybody wants to throw it to Rochelle and Jason and all that. It's three against one in there. You, you can't throw it in there. So they shot 43 threes. We shot 31. And out of our 31, 28 of them were wide open horse shots. Okay, you, you have to be able to make those shots. If you're going to beat a good team, you know, and that's the bad news is we haven't made them. Good news is, is we've made them before. The Lobos had a significant advantage on the boards today, but it didn't result in the win. We asked coach what that was about. No, it was mostly the three pointers that went in. They add up in a hurry and uh, they hit 18. Um, that's 54 points. That's that's tough to overcome. And given all the open looks Colorado State was getting throughout the game, we asked Coach if there was ever a thought of changing the defense, maybe to man. Yeah, you know, we got kind of, you know, they, they hit a couple in a row there, uh, beginning of the fourth quarter. So we, we tried to go two, three, just to, just to mix it up, make them run something different. But, you know, like I said, then you just get uh, – Nystrom in the middle making all the decisions and that's never going to work. Um, so, you know, we had to go back to the one three one and get the right people to shoot, which we did. And once again, they made them all. After losing three games in a row, the men's Lobos basketball team took off to Colorado State to play the Rams. They would face a tough test in CSU as they have Gian Cavelli, who is averaging over 20 points per game in conference play entering the game. The Rams also have Emmanuel O, who is the league leading rebounder, pulling in over 10 boards a game. And things got going before the game even started, as the reports of the, t the teams were jawing, with Colorado State telling the UNM players they were coming for the coaching staff's job. While CSU did have a momentary lead in the first half, the Lobos' impressive first half was too much. They scored 44 points and led by 10 at the break. They would come out just as hot to start the second half and open up on a 17 to 10 run. And at one point, the Lobos would lead, lead by as much as 21. However, the drama and the talk from this contest didn't focus on the actual game that was played. While the game was chippy the entire way, Joe Firstinger would set a crushing screen late in the game and then flex over the defender who was hurt on the ground, and the Colorado State fans did not appreciate that. After the game, Albuquerque's, Albuquerque Journal's Jeff Grammer captured footage of a verbal altercation between UNM assistant coach Taryn Wrencher and the aforementioned Emmanuel O. In the video, Coach Wrencher can be heard saying, I'm right here. You're not gonna whip nothing, boy, and learn how to lose, boy. No matter what was said or happened between these two last year or during this game or was said before the video that we saw started, this is an inexcusable action and behavior for a coach. Where I'm from, the words, I'm right here, are fighting words that are usually followed up by, come do something. The fact that a grown man who is supposed to be setting a good example for his players and representing the University of New Mexico would continue to instigate and taunt a player is shameful. Wrencher issued an apology a few days later. In it, he apologized to his family, UNM, Colorado State, and everyone affected by the incident and acknowledges that he should have walked, had fault in the situation and should have walked away. I would have liked to have seen him mention Emmanuel O personally in that apology and not attempt to plead as innocent by stating he didn't instigate the confrontation. UNM issued Wrencher a letter of reprimand. Coming up on Tread on Sports, we're going to cover the men and women's games against Boise State. Again, the women home against Boise State, and we'll see how the men did after they traveled up to Idaho. Stay tuned.